Hi, my name is Amba Salelkar and I'm with the Equal Center for Promotion of Social Justice in Chennai. We work on bridging the gap between the DPO sector and policy makers by ensuring that the DPO sector voice uh, are heard on issues that concern them. So there may be new policies, laws, budget, or anything of that nature. And we've just completed our second year, um, so yay. Um, now, and we're bringing, we're hoping to bring it in with, uh, you know, with, with uh, responding to uh, the new draft education policy, which some of you may already have seen. Now, education is important for all of us. We know that. And for persons with disabilities, the education system is really one of the first, the earliest barriers that they come across. The Constitution of India has made it a right for children between the ages of 6 and 14 to get an education. And the Right to Education Act uh, in the 2012 amendment has extended this to inclusive education for children with disabilities. Now, but for those of us who are working on the ground, we know that this hasn't meant that all children with disabilities are getting the education that they need. Children with disabilities often enter the education system late when they do and they're forced to drop out often. So when we look at a national education policy which is going to impact 10 to 15 percent of all of the student population going by WHO um, uh, estimates, we need to see how this will impact persons with disabilities. So what does the national education policy draft say? Well, the policy is pretty good and extensive. It talks about a lot of things, but I'm going to just discuss some of them here. One is to ensure that all children, youth, and adults have access to inclusive and quality education with lifetime learning opportunities. It talks about reforming what we study, how we study it, how we are tested, the quality of teaching and leadership in educational institutions. It also talks about replacing old-fashioned mugging with developing skills of creative and innovative thinking in students. So some of the policy objectives in the policy are looking at early childhood education services for preschool students aged four to five. Secondary education is also being made universal and students who complete secondary education should have access to higher secondary education, higher secondary education complete students should have access or equitable access, as the policy says, to higher education. All education programs, and this is important, are to be made accessible, inclusive, and responsive to diverse groups, including those with special needs and disabilities. And the policy talks about giving those students required support. It doesn't elaborate on what that means. Uh, the policy also talks about eliminating gender gaps, uh, but it does not talk about the transgender community. It also talks about expanding opportunities for skill development for both life and work. It talks about young adults who are already employed, uh, you know, around above the age of 14, and how they should be given uh, the skills for employability. It also talks about the gaps in accessing higher education and promoting innovation in it. It talks about information and technology uh, information and communication technologies (ICT) for students, and it talks about this in the context of teacher training. On teacher training, also there is a focus on creating qualified and competent teachers. Uh, all youth and at least 90% of adults, uh, both men and women should achieve literacy um, literacy and numeracy skills which are prescribed by the adult education program. On education planning, the focus is on creating systems that involve stakeholders at all levels and which is accountable, uh, which really become meaningful to the changing demands of the education system. Uh, this includes creating good leadership in education. So by leadership, they mean like the principals, the headmasters, etc. And lastly, and more importantly, it talks about ensuring increased and well-targeted financing for educational developmental programs. So what impact will this policy have? A new education policy can result in, such as this one, can result in amendments to the Right to Education Act, we'll have to see. But it will definitely alter existing schemes on primary, secondary, higher, and adult education. And there are a lot of schemes. 
you can check the um, uh, you know the, the video description for some of the links. But just to highlight a few, there is the Sarvashik Shabhyan, which is uh, the scheme primarily related to um, primary education. The Rashtriya Madhyamik Shiksha Abhyan, which is on secondary education. Uh, the Rashtriya Uchchatar uh, Shiksha Abhyan, which is on higher education. And Sakshar Bharat, which is on adult education. It will also impact the way budgets are allotted. We hope uh, on this. Now, you may have noticed that the policy is silent about special education, uh, but this is because special education falls under the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment and not the HRD, the Human Resource Development Ministry. Um, that said, uh, the policy does talk about linkages with Skill India um, and other programs. Now, uh, so what do we do? That this is the this is the policy that's out, and uh, the deadline is the 31st of July to respond. Um, there are various ways in which you can respond to this. One is if you'd like to do it yourself, you can log on to mygov.in um, and you can look for the policy. Again, the link is in, in uh, is below, um, and you can you can proceed that way, or uh, you could uh, work with us. <laughs> we are in the process of, like I said, collating a cross disability response to uh, the document on behalf of the disability sector. Our, you know, we are stressing on a cross-disability approach, looking at all of the aspects of the policy, and we want to support the stance of the CRPD and also focus on what is do, what are deliverables under the SDGs. We also want to work across intersectionality, so we don't want, you know, a certain group of people being over overrepresented. So we want to reach out to persons with disabilities who are in non-urban areas who may face other intersectionalities of religion or caste or gender or sexuality. And we'd like as many diverse responses as possible. And we, within the next two weeks. So, what should you be contributing? One is data. I cannot emphasize, we need data. If you've collected data on any level of con education, like through a project you may be doing which is on education or otherwise, please share it with us. We will make a reference to it with links to, you know, your... Um... Let's give you an example of how data helps. Under the Sharva Shiksha on the SSA, there is a component called Special Learning Needs, which amounts to about 3,000 rupees per child per year. But when my colleague at uh, Equals Meenakshi analyzed on what are the activities which are planned under this particular expenditure in a district in Tamil Nadu called Tiruvalu, it was found that the activities which were included in the component included allocation to a residential bridge course, daycare centers, resource centers, salaries of physiotherapists, special educators, braille books, assistive devices, modification of teaching and learning materials, surgeries, training teachers, ramps, and barrier-free environments. Um, but a lot of the components which were mentioned that I've just mentioned to you should not be allowed under specific learning needs of students with disabilities because that needs to be tailored to them. And for example, barrier-free uh, environment is, is a really good example of this because um, uh, you know, it's sensitization and awareness, sport, salaries of teachers. This should be part of general heads, um, you know, like building funds or salaries of teachers. It shouldn't be taken from this particular component. Um, and uh, other components like daycare centers or home-based education, uh, that needs to be taken, you need to take that away because that is not in compliance with the CRP. And nearly 27% of allocation of the districts goes into running these centers. So that's not a small amount and that could go towards a better inclusive education system. The second uh, important thing is instances of discrimination which you may have personally suffered or it's something which you know you took to a higher authority or it's something that you're aware of whether it was in the media. Um, for instance uh, again when we did uh, group discussions in several Tamil Nadu districts in 2014 around uh, the disabilities bill uh, we were really surprised because we were told that with regard to higher education, many students with disabilities were only given the option of opting for language BAs in higher education, 
particularly blind students like nothing else was they weren't even allowed to consider a bsc or a bcom it was just language or you wouldn't get admission um but let me also emphasize that good practices are also really important because we we can't really go with a negative attitude we need to sort of show that well there are things which can be possible so please do contribute send us your responses in the format that you are comfortable in like i said we will credit each submission and we are in the process of working on a draft uh, which we will update uh, when we get responses uh, you can choose to support that document as well because that's always welcome uh, and to keep up with that process you can follow us on facebook we are equal cpsj or uh, at equal cpsj on twitter or you could write to us at contact at equal cpsj or org to you know be on our list and and be updated with this So uh thanks a lot uh we hope to see a lot of contributions from you guys in the next 2 weeks so um take care and thanks for listening